Hello and welcome to another video installment of our Android Xamarin Platform video tutorials. So in this video we're going to be talking about storing data on the Android device. Um, and we've talked a little bit about this previously. I did a video on how to do um, the sh uh, shared preferences file so that you could save data uh, that is necessary for your application to run or things like settings and configuration data for your app in that shared preferences file. Well, this video is going to be going in a little deeper with the idea of storing data by using the SQLite database and, and how we can use SQLite to store data and object data in our applications for retrieval. Uh, which is kind of a more robust way of doing this. So of course based on your apps needs it would depend on you know is using a database the right choice maybe um, it is okay just to use a file or the shared preferences um, of course SQLite and the database uh, capabilities of mobile phones are great but not nearly as great as they would be on like a desktop or laptop or a server so there's a couple of, of different reasons why you would want to use a SQL Server in your app, or I'm sorry, a SQLite uh, database in your app. So um, you can store things like preferences if you don't want to use the shared preferences. Um, you could store text files. You can store serialized data files. Um, you know, there are image files, all, all kinds of stuff to the phone. So a database is, is useful when we want efficient storage, uh, when our data has some kind of structure, maybe it's object data or relational data. Uh, we want specific data to be able to be extracted, right, because we can use queries, we can um, sort that data, we can aggregate it, and uh, we can use data access code. So in this video, I want to walk you through how to set up your SQLite database engine which comes on the Google mobile platform. So how do we get started with our Android application? So I just started, you know, a regular old basic Android Xamarin project. This is our, our usual, um, you know, main view here. I just changed the, the data on this to say store data. And then over here in the main activity, I wiped out that silly counter that they put in that button click code. So that's where we're going to get started today. So the first thing I am going to want to do in my application before I get started writing any code or anything is set up the SQLite.net uh, package that we can get from NuGet. And so I strongly recommend uh, the SQLite.net uh, source package here. And if you aren't familiar with NuGet, it is basically a package manager that uh, works inside of Visual Studio so that you can um, pull these packages in and install them into your application. They'll set up the dependencies and everything that you need. And so you can see right here on the main page it says to you can run install package SQLite net PCL. And so um, to get to where we would run that we would go to tools, uh, NuGet package manager and then just the package manager console. And so here you can see our package manager prompt. So I'm going to do install package SQLite net PCL, just like it says there on the page. And then that's going to download that package and get it installed into our uh, application. So when it's all done, you'll see this successfully installed uh, package here. And then you can just get rid of the package manager console. And then I went ahead and added our system.io using statement that we'll need. And then we're also going to need using SQLite that we have just added in through our package manager. So next we'll go ahead and set up our database reference, which is a uh, file path of our SQLite database file. So basically what file is that, what's it named, and where is it located? We don't need to worry about if this file already exists. We don't create a blank database and put it on the device or anything like that. Um, it will be automatically created uh, if it doesn't already exist. Um, if it does exist, then the existing database file will just go ahead and be opened. Now for the sake of our, our tutorial and quickness here, I'm going to do all of this right here in this button click, which we saw was hooked up to this button that just says store data. 
And so the first thing I'm going to do is set up my path string for the database file. Right? And so um, you can use a var, you can use a string, either way. Um, so I'm going to call this dbpath. So we're going to do a path.combine. Um, the we need the system environment. Oops, wrong button. Environment. Um, get folder path for the system environment, and I could put that in the using statement, but I'm just being quick here. Uh, special folder personal. So make sure you're on the right side of that uh, first parenthesis there. So comma. And then in quotes, what do we want to name our database? So I'm going to name this um, db test dot uh, db3, and then make sure that we get a semicolon at the end of that line. So this is basically um, setting up that path uh, file, that string that we want. We're going to name our database file db test, and db3 being the file extension for our SQLite database that we're using. And we're getting the system environment special folder personal, which resides on the uh, the phone or device that we're using, so we know where we're going to be saving it. Once we have created uh, this file, this um, or this path, then we can set up our connection. So we uh, set up the database connection. And that is a new SQLite connection, and we give it that uh, DB path string that we just created. And then now that we have our SQLite connection object, we can set up a table. And so um, DB dot, and we want to create table. And then we can decide um, what do we want to create. So typically the purpose behind uh, using SQLite and this object relational model that SQLite uses is that we are creating a table relational structure based around the same uh, structure that we're using in our business logic layer, which would be the classes that we are using in our application. So I don't currently have a class in this application, but I could quickly go grab one from a previous example. So if I come over here to my project and I do um, add existing item, then I could go browse previous projects to find a class object that maybe I want to use. So in our previous Android data project where we learned how to use the shared preferences, I had this contact class. And so I think that I'm just going to pull that in. We have to make sure our namespaces match here, so let's go ahead and change that. Uh, but here is that contact class. It contains a, a couple of members. We have name, phone number, a constructor, and a two-string. So just a quick uh, little class that we can use for our example here. So when we are creating our table, if we want to create the table structure to be the same as our uh, object, then we would just put that here in the brackets. And that will create a table structure that matches the class object that we are working with so that they will automatically work together to save objects of those type. So let's go ahead and create a new contact object so we have something to work with here. And I'm just going to hard code this data in. So uh, we'll call this my contact. And so we need a name and a phone number. So once we have an object, we can store the object into the table. So db.insert, and we give it the object that we want to insert. Right? It's almost hard to believe that it really is that easy, especially for those of us who have been doing um, app development pretty much since phones had apps. Uh, the idea that we can just uh, call a couple of lines and store data in a table uh, sometimes blows my mind a little bit. Uh, but this is, it is basically how it works, and so I can go ahead and run this application and show you um, basically what's happening here on the phone. Not that there is a lot to look at currently, so 
uh, you can see there's our our app and our button and so if we click the button um, it should be store creating one of these objects and storing it now you can't really see what's happening unless you're uh, running your tools in Visual Studio that let you uh, dig into the debugging of the app so that you can actually see the data transaction taking place but let's look at how we pull that data back out so that we can actually prove that it's being stored okay so to be able to show you if this data is actually being stored I just set up another button get data and this is a text view and so in our activity I'm going to set up uh, another button click event here so we'll have our button I'm going to call this get button find view by ID and our resource ID which is my get button so setting up the click event I can't spell today <laughs> all right there we go that was painful all right so um, one of the things I'm going to need to do is move this path out of this button click event and up here to a class level variable so that I can access it down here in my other click event and so um, I'm gonna get that text view set up here I really need a hotkey for this statement I had one set up at one point since uh, it's something we do so frequently okay so um, just like we did up above we set up the database connection anytime that we're wanting to talk with the database and that DB path that's why I had to move that out to a class level variable so that we would be able to access it and remember it um, as long as we don't change the file name it'll be able to access that same database over and over again and not try to create a new one so we're going to um, connect to the table that contains the data we want and so var <laughs> goodness uh, table and that's a contact now one thing I will note uh, your class has to have uh, you know it doesn't matter if it has a constructor set up you have to have the um, blank constructor for this to work or otherwise um, being able to pull this out um, it won't be queryable if it doesn't have the blank constructor because it'll need that in order to create this uh, table object right here so if you're getting an error double check that you have um, at least that blank reference constructor uh, because that's a common problem so all I need to do here is I'm just going to do a for each of our item in the table and for each item in the table you could then recreate your your contact uh, object as you pulled that data out so you could say um, it's a contact and this would be um, your item dot name and your item dot uh, phone number and we could put those into our display text um, and it should call our constructor and we probably want to concatenate on here a, a new line character I think that's what display text is going to want otherwise it's going to jam them all onto one line now I probably have a lot of Tiffany's in there because I've been hitting that button repeatedly uh, while showing you how this works so let's go ahead and change this to uh, something else like Sam and maybe give Sam a different phone number so that you can see what's going on here so let's go ahead and give that a run okay so here we are in our app we can see our store data and get data buttons so if I hit store data that should now give me the Sam information that I changed and if I hit get data so you should be able to see the data there we had um, and I should have erased the text but there are our objects um, stored in the SQLite table for contacts and it, we can see that it is creating the object and is using the to string to display that information for us
So that is it. It is really that easy for you to um, start using SQLite databases in your Android Xamarin applications. And so um, I have another video coming up after this that will show you then how you can pull that data out, manipulate it, um, and, and be able to do some uh, different SQL queries and things that you may want to be doing in your apps. So start working with SQLite databases and thinking about uh, app storage.